What is up everybody? Welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach and in this video we are actually going to answer the question of how to do a for loop in Python. So without further ado let's hop right in start coding. What up everybody? So like I mentioned in this video we're tackling that question of how to do a for loop in Python. And in doing this video, I wanted to kind of cover the syntax of a for loop and then kind of go into an example of doing a for loop with you and just maybe a, a couple different data structures you could do a for loop with and how it can make your life a little bit easier. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start talking about the syntax of a for loop. So the syntax for a for loop is actually quite simple. Just like in my previous video, when I talked about the while loop, it's pretty similar to that. And, and, and maybe there's one extra keyword that you have, you have to use other than the while loop, but a for loop is pretty simple. Uh, in a sense, all you have to do is like for, for, and then the keyword for, and then you follow up with a variable name, and I'm just gonna use x, and then in, that's the other keyword you have to have, and then you could do something like, you can use range, which basically would be like if you wanted to like go through a range of numbers, or you can use a list, you can put a list here, or you can put a dictionary here, or you can put like a tuple here, and so on and so forth. And then you have to put like, um, you have to put a colon, and then go into your new line, indent by the number of spaces, Python again, traditionally is four spaces, and then you do the code you want to run. And in this, you can use this variable or, um, yeah, you can use this variable within this code and that's how you do it. And that's essentially the, the main, I would say this is the, the, the syntax that 99% of everybody will use. There's what I call an ex extended syntax that I totally spaced up until like putting this video together. And essentially the extended t syntax is just the same thing, but you can throw in an else like that and um and then you can do like this is basically the code that'll be ran upon um for loop completion i suck at spelling so we're just finishing <laughs> um but essentially like once you once the code code or once the loop exits like and it's like gone through the end of the what it's trying to loop through it'll then run this immediately i believe if it's like if you do put a break in your loop in the for loop to like and like i mentioned before when talking about while loops a break in a loop will essentially just get you out of that that current loop that you're in and so if you put a break in here i believe that it does not execute the else statement if you use this syntax but again i've written a lot of for loops in python on and I hardly if actually I don't actually think I've ever used an else um, with a for loop I'm sure there's a time and a place for them but I haven't done it if you know or if you've experienced using an else um, or seen people who've used an else else in their for loop in Python leave a comment of, of why they did it. I'd love to know um, but essentially these are I would say the two main or this, this is the two main syntax that, that you can use in Python to write a for loop. Um, again, though, I would say like 99.9 .9 people are just gonna go with this this first one. Um, but again, yeah, simple syntax, simple to use, but to kind of get a feel for it, let's dive into some examples on using for loops and that'll probably help you with your programming journey. So without further ado, let's go over some examples. Hey, I just wanna jump in real quick, say thank you so much for watching the video so far. If it's providing you value, please click that like button below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel channel so we can learn more about software development and programming and well speaking of programming let's get right back to it so the example um, that I wanted to go over was basically I set up these um, different things so I set up a list called people with a bunch of different names I set up a dictionary uh, with the curly braces and a key value pair um, with just numbers and the names and then I set up a people tuple a tuple which is basically just the same as a list but it's the same basically the same as a list but you use a different syntax with the, the um, parentheses rather than the brackets. And uh, what I want to do is I kind of want to do a for loop that goes through each of these and just shows you how you can do it. And for the, so what you have to do is you do four and then we're going to go um, person in people. We can then just say print. I'm just gonna I'm gonna use an f string and do list. If you don't know about f strings, basically it's a way to format a string. And you, what's cool is you can put the variables in. Um, I have a full I have a I have a video that talks about strings and how you can write them up on um, another video, which I'll link um, here in the video. And if you want to check it out, go ahead. But essentially, I'm gonna say list, and then I'm just gonna say person, just so we know that this for loop you're getting from the list of people. Um, and if we test this out, uh, we can run it and we say list Jim, Jane, and Bob. There it is. Boom. Um, simple, simple, easy to use. Um, that's how you can basically create a, a for loop with a list and loop through um, the items in a list. You could also do this. Um, 
if we did this as X or I, a lot of people use I, um, and then we say use the range. So like I said, range will basically take a number, a, a number area and then go from zero as default up to whatever number you want to do it, you know, you're going to. Um, or you can set like what index or number you want to start at. And then it also increment by just one. You can um, set it up where it in increments by two or three or 10 or however many you want. Uh, but essentially we're just gonna do the default. So we don't need to put in a start and I'm just gonna put in the stop. And I'm gonna put the length of people, which basically says um, the length of that list. And I will do a print statement here just so we have space, just so we can see that. Um, and if we run this, we basically should get the same thing. I'm gonna say V2. And oh, except for you gotta do, you gotta do people, and then you gotta give it bracket I. So basically we're accessing that array using the bracket operator at the ith index. Um, and you'll see that this will go through, and I'll also tell you what I is by just saying, uh, what I is there. So we'll print that as well. So if we get this, we should have two lists that run. They should be basically identical in the sense that the values are identical, but just what it's being printed out is different. So those are the values, Jim, Jane, and Bob that got printed out for both of them. And then we can see list two gave me the exact same thing. So again, two different ways to go over list um, and to how to write, basically do a for loop. Now, if we wanted to extend this to essentially do it with dictionaries, we could do the same thing. So we could say for employee, in employees, then let's see what this gives us. If we print out, and I'm just gonna do basically copy this and do that. And we'll comment this out, the list stuff right now, just so we know we're only know we're looking at the dictionary stuff. If we do this, you see something that, that's very similar to that of the list. The dictionary actually just gives us the keys as when we do this for employee in syntax, like for value in employee uh, or employees or in a dictionary, it'll basically this value, this variable will be just the key that is for each one of the, that for all the keys basically in um, the dictionary. It's a similar as if you did something like this. And in, Pyth in Python 2, you could do this. Um, uh, keys and it would work. But in Python 3, which I mostly only do stuff on Python 3, you kind of have to wrap this in a list um, tag. Actually, I don't think you do. Well, let's test it. This is good learning, remembering experience for everybody. So that's the same thing. And then if I did this, does it throw an error? Nope, it doesn't. So you can just do keys. This basically will return, um, so it returns a set like object providing the view. So you can you can list through a set as well. Um, but if you wanted to iterate through this as a list, then you'd wrap it as a list with that list tag like I did at first, and that'd give you like the list version of Jim, 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 Jim Jane and Bob. Um, so that's how you can you know loop through a dictionary. You can do something though, like, and I believe it's items, and you can get, uh, you can do, this will be like the key and the value. And if we do that, oh, I'll write that there, key, value. And if we run through this, there it is. So, um, and you can see that this is a little different than what we had before. Like if I ran this guy, this for loop, because uh, we'll provide this print statement too so we can see the difference a little bit better. And there you go. So you see that like when I do the for loop and I have I and I'm doing I in range and like I is just an index value and it starts at zero base, it starts there and it's going to zero to one. But you see when I do the key value stuff with items and in employ in, in employees, it's basically just taking this whole thing and just giving you like just the key and the value comma separated out. And what that does is I give, or not comma separated, but it gives you the two, you know, it returns basically the two, the key and the value at the same time. So in a for loop, you can have more than one uh, variable. And that's why I wanted to show Show this because now I can take these two variables and um, put them and print them out and deal with them both at the same time. And so, and why I said it was different than like the list with the index is because like if you look down here, you might think, oh, it's off by one, but no, like these are actually the values in the dictionary that one is associated with Jim, two is associated with Jane, and three is associated with Bob. So there you have it. And if we wanted to go on even further, um, we could do the same thing with a tuple. And I'll just change this to people tap. And we'll say this is the tuple. If we run this, 
we get this exact same thing. So again, that's just the syntax for um, the various ways that you can use um, a for loop with different um, with different containers or different uh, data structures like lists, uh, dictionaries, tuples. And also if you just want to loop through given a number like you can do up here um, that we that we did up here with the length with using range. It doesn't have to be, I don't have to give it the length of a dictionary, the length of a list or whatever. I can actually just say like three and run and it'll go from starting from zero, it will give you three values. And basically, like that's how I like to think about it. Like if I put in this, it's gonna give me three values. But it's, again, you have to think that Python is index based, index zero based. So you have to go like, when I put in three, that's really gonna go from zero to two. So those are the different ways that you can use, or that's the different ways that you can do a for loop in Python um, with very different uh, data structures and whatnot. So I would say go try this out with the current projects that you're working on and try using a for loop, go through a list or create create a list for some objects and use a for loop to help you print out stuff a lot easier like I did here or to, to even make another list um, from a for loop or a dictionary. And so I would say go give that a try. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment. I'll either create another video off it or I will answer them directly right there. And until next time, keep on coding. Hey, thank you so much for programming with me today. I really appreciate it. Hey, and this if this video provided you value, please hit that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed, well, subscribe. Let's continue learning with one another as we go on this coding journey together. And until next time, keep on coding. Go.